All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Rakatha Yahweh, Rakatha Yahweh Shai, Rakatha Yahweh, Rakatha Yahweh Shai, Rakatha Yahweh, Rakatha Yahweh Shai, Paul Halal La Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. All right, that's Hebrew for bless Yahweh, bless Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Father Yahweh in the name of the Son, Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles, elders of Great Millstone, who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hope for elect, scattered abroad. All right, I'm your brother Taz of War. Back at you again with another lesson. And this is in the book of Revelations, chapter 18 and 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying Babylon the great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxing rich through the abundance of her delicacies and this is this Babylon the Greek which is fallen is America all right North America the Lord right now is consuming this place with the spirit of his mouth and that's through his prophets and the scriptures say then with the brightness of his coming and that's going to be through Yahweh when this place is going to be wiped off the face of the earth all right the Lord prophesies of a world war three that the Armageddon is going to be when the Lord shoot those nuclear missiles off from one continent to come to another which is here in Babylon the Great to be destroyed all right then this place is going to be wiped off the face of the earth and this scripture is going to be read and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying Babylon the Great is fallen is fallen and become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and cage of every unclean and hateful bird because this place is gonna become a wilderness all right and it's rightfully so you know this place is in need of a cleanse and that cleansing agent is fire which fire purifies so the Lord is gonna purify this land and cleanse it by the way of fire all right now verse 3 for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication so every nation have taken on the false philosophies, the religions, the ideologies, all right, of this place called America, basically of Esau Edom. Every nation have drunk of the wine of her, of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, which fornication goes into adultery. You have spiritual adultery and you also have physical adultery, okay? So it says fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. You got China, they mimic themselves after Esau. Matter of fact, they're looking to surpass Esau when it deals with this technology. You got the Arabs, they all join forces with the elites. You know, they all in one cahoots to create this new world order, all right? It says the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxing rich through the abundance of her delicacy because this place, America, was made as a cash cow to the other nations. And every nation, okay, have taken their pleasure and abundance from this place, America. All right, and that's through the consuming of Jake because Jake is the biggest consumers. This is why in the neighborhoods of Jake, you got Chinese stores, all right, you got you got uh, beauty salons, okay? You got you got hair mics with their stores, which are the Africans. You know, all these nations they 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 eat off of Jacob's consumption. All right, you got a bunch of liquor stores on every block. All right, so it says, and the merchants of the earth are waxing rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And not just that, even, you know, clothes being made. You know, there was a video I seen, a guy was speaking about, uh, I don't know, I think he was a, a, a church, a church holy roller, you know, one of them guys. 
but he made sense in one of the, one of his speeches. He was breaking down uh, the clothing line and the names of the clothing line today, like Tommy Hilfiger, you know, and all the other different known popular brands. Those those names are last names to families, which are Edomites. So every time you buy, well, basically all of these corporations are named after their families, you know, like Wells Fargo. All right, he was breaking it down how here it is, you go, you know, to uh, buy certain clothes and you buying and you putting money into that family's pocket. All right, so they're always gonna be wealthy. Jake always loved to spend, you know, on things that they know they can't, they can't afford. You know, it's about name brand. It's not really about the quality. It's really just about the name brand because Jake wants somebody to see what they got so they can look like they living beyond their means. You know, so it's all in the mind, it's deception. But Jake being a consumer, how he was breaking it down, you go and buy a certain clothing line, and I mean, a certain clothes from a family, and then, you know, you go put your money into the bank, like all these things, I can't remember everything he said, but all these things go back to these different families of Esau, and how they make good wealth off you, man. McDonald's is a last name. Abercrombie and Fitch, last name. Armani is a last name. Baskin Robbins is a last name. Chrysler is a last name. Fisher Price, Gucci, Hennessy, Harley Davidson, Hilton, Honda, Kohl's, Kraft Foods, Lowe's Movie Theater, Marriott is a last name. Maybach is a last name. Nordstrom is a last name. Pillsbury is a last name. Porsche is a last name. Procter and Gamble, two last names. Rolls Royce, Charles Rolls, Henry Royce, last names. Turner Broadcast System, Ted Turner, last name. Versace, last name. Wells Fargo, Henry Wells, William Fargo, last name. Walgreens, last name. Wrigley's, last name. Welch's Grape Juice, last name. Here you are, you think you're buying a product. You are not buying a product, you're buying a name. You think you're wearing a product. Hey, look at this product. No, you're saying, look at this family. And what you don't know is while you're making every family rich, you're making yourself broke. So let me read the scripture again. It says, and the merchants of the earth are waxing rich through the abundance of her delicacies. All right. And it says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. All right, now, now real quick, let me get a quick precept. This is the book of Revelations chapter 11, verse 11. It says, and after three days, three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Now that spirit of light represents the truth represents the word so it says and after three days and a half the spirit of life and the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them which was the word it says and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them verse 12 and they heard a great voice from heaven unto them come up hither they ascended up in the heaven and the cloud and their enemies beheld them so when we read back in revelations 18 and 4 and it says, and I heard another voice from heaven. That voice from heaven was the, was the heavenly father's voice. All right. And it says, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying, come, uh, saying unto them, excuse me, come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven into a cloud. And that cloud represents a chariot. It says, and their enemies beheld them. You know, think of wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter. So far beyond it, they look for right it says verse 13 and the same hour there was a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant were afraid of and gave glory to the most high of heaven so that great earthquake represents the thermonuclear destruction now real quick let me get another quick preset to back that up This is the book of Isaiah. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 24, verse 19. 
it says, and the earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall rail to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgressions thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. All right, so let me read that scripture again in verse 13. This is Revelation, Revelations 11 and 13. In the same hour there was a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000 and the remnant were afraid of and gave glory to Yahweh of heaven. All right, which that great earthquake represents the thermonuclear structure. So I'm gonna read again a precept, Isaiah 24 and 19. And the earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall rail to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgressions thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. Verse 21, and it shall come to pass that in that day that Yahweh shall punish the hosts of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. It says, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in a pit and shall be shut up in the prison and after many days they shall be visited. That's the point. All right. Let's, let me get, um, let me get this scripture in the book of Revelations. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 6 and 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. So showing you that great earthquake again. It says, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of an almighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together and that shows you that picture that depiction of a, a nuclear of a nuclear destruction when you see that mushroom cloud it said the heaven departed as a scroll when it rolleth together and every mountain and island were moved out of their place all right so now let's get back to revelations 18 and 4 and I heard another voice from heaven. So now we know what that voice was. That voice was the most high. All right. It says saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. It says for her sins have reached unto heaven and Yahweh have remembered her iniquities. Verse six, reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works and the cup which she had filled, fill her double. All right, so the Lord is gonna fill Esau double according to the works that he had filled us. He gave, he put us in the captivity. He kept, he kept a perpetual hatred toward us. He didn't open the, the uh, prisons. He didn't open the gates of his prisoners, which are, which are his captives, which are the Israelites. He took us from one continent to another. He kept us as slaves. And now he's looking to make us a perpetual slave. By putting that all, by really sealing you with that all, which would be that MOTB, all right, that karagma. So it says, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and you damn right, okay? This wicked ass society, the sins here are reaching up to heavens, man. You know, these people are, they, they done lost their goddamn mind, man. You know, where there's no morals, no moral anymore, it's no righteous dignity anymore. Even though they're not under the, they're not following the ways of the Lord, but at least have some righteous dignity. But it's none. So all of the sins, so you know, scriptures say sin shall uh, iniquity shall increase, and we're seeing it each day, each day, as the Lord consumed this devil with the spirit of his mouth. The people are just waxing more wickedly, man. Jake is being more wickedly. They overpassing the deeds of the wicked. So it says. And her sins shall reach unto heaven, and Yahweh have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. And the cup that we, in the cup which she had filled, fill her double. All right, now real quick, I was thinking of a, a quick precept, the Book of Lamentations. So 
lock in. Who's that again? I think it's Joe 21. Hold on. All right, this is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall be passed through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken, and it shall make thyself naked. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. All right. So that cup is, is, is shall be passed through unto thee, O house of Edom. The scriptures say, rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and thou shalt make thyself naked. Yeah, Job 21, it says, verse 17, How oft is the candle of the wicked put out, and how oft cometh their destruction upon them? Yahweh distributes sorrows in his anger. They are as stubble before the wind, and as the shaft that the storm carrieth away. Yahweh layeth up his iniquity for his children. He rewardeth him, and he shall know it. It says, His eyes shall see his destruction, and he shall drink of the, the wrath of the Almighty. Alessandra. All right, verse 21. For what pleasure have he in his house after him when the number of his months is cut off in the midst? Shall any teach Yahweh knowledge, seeing he judgeth those that are high? Yeah, because those that are high is the elites. The Most High is going to visit them. They have not ran this earth correctly, man. Now they're looking to actually do worse than what any other nation have ever done or any worse or let me say any iniquity that Jacob has ever did man you know I'm thinking of an account with um King David and uh what's that Samuel's 24th chapter when King David numbered the people yeah I want to do a lesson on it too Lord willing uh make a good point out of it right because King David numbered the people and the Lord the heavenly father uh, uh uh well king david when he numbered the people he went off all right he went off and then he humbled himself he he, he prayed for repentance man but the lord was going to punish him and told him you know you got to choose from three these three punishments and that punishment that was chosen was was um was the lord slaying seventy thousand men okay and david saw the angel and when he saw the angel, he even was more sorrowful. And he was a, you know, that showed you even when you read that account, how he was a righteous king, because, you know, he even said, you know, why kill of the why kill of them kill my household, roughly paraphrasing, you know, because he was a righteous king. But the point is that if David couldn't get away, King David, all right, which was beloved of the most high, then, okay, if he couldn't get away with numbering the people, how much more Esau the wicked? which is profane, which profane means outside the temple, all right? And the scriptures say there is no repentance for Esau, though he sought it with tears. So let's get back to the scriptures, Job 21 and 21. For what pleasure hath he in his house after him when the number of his months is cut off in the midst? Shall any teacher how with knowledge, seeing he judgeth those that are high? One dieth and his full strength, being holy at ease and quiet. His, his, his breasts are full of milk and his bones are moistened with marrow and another dieth in the bitterness of his soul and never eateth with pleasure. They shall lie down alike in the dust and in the worm shall cover them. It says, Behold, I know the thoughts and the device which ye, wrong, ye wrongfully imagine against me. For ye say, Where is the house of the prince? And where are the dwelling places of the wicked? Have ye not asked them that go by the way? And do ye not know their tokens? That the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Woo. So Esau is reserved for the day of destruction. Just as well as two-thirds of the Lord's people. The wicked 
or the wicked is Esau, but Jake is wicked, being wicked as hell too. You're reserved for the day of destruction, man. It says that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Who shall declare his way to his face? And who shall repay him what he hath done? Yet shall he be brought to the grave and shall remain in the tomb. The clods, the clods of the valley shall be sweet unto me. Well, excuse me. The clods of the valley shall be sweet unto him. And every man shall draw after him as there are innumerable before him. How oft, excuse me, how then comfort ye me in vain, seeing in your answer there remain a falsehood. You know, so that's basically the point. So let me get back to Revelations 18 and 6. Uh, it says, uh, verse 7, it says, How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much the torment and sorrow give her, she shall, for she say in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Matter of fact, there is a scripture I was looking for. Um, what was the scripture? Uh, this is Jeremiah chapter 49. 49 the point is in verse 12 but I start at 10 it says but I have made Esau bear I have uncovered this, his secret places and he shall not be able to hide himself his seed is for you and his brethren and his neighbors and he is not leave thou fatherless children I will preserve them alive and let thou widows trust in me Here's the point. For thus saith Yahweh, behold, they who judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken, and art thou, and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. So Esau, you're gonna drink that cup. That's the scripture I was actually looking for, not Job 21, but you know it all goes, it all comes together. All right, so let's continue in Revelations 18 and 7. How much she glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she say in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. And that also reminds me of Isaiah 47. All right, Isaiah 47. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Isaiah 47. And um, the point I'm looking for, or well, I'm thinking about, Is uh, verse yep verse 6 I was wroth of my people I have polluted my inheritance I have given them unto thy hand thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient has thou very heavily laid thou yoke and thou saidest I shall be a lady forever so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart neither did remember the latter end of it so Esau thinks he's gonna be that lady forever you know, he think that um, his house shall continue forever. Okay. It says, therefore, hear now this, thou that are given to pleasures. And that's what these devils are, man. Everything is for their pleasure. You know, they take, they rob resources from every nation. They take land from you and they put you in a box. Right now, they're afraid of uh, the, uh, the people, the nations in the world are overpopulating them. And it's going to take away their resources, which they stole. So that's why they want to, you know, do the D thing, the uh, Georgia Godstone. I'll say that. It says, therefore, hear now this, thou that are given to pleasures, that the well is carelessly, that say is in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a, I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children, because that's Esau's mindset. They say in their mind that they're not going to lose. These elites thinking that they're not going to lose, they're going to control a destruction. And they're going to build back better. You know, that's their slogan. It says, I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day. The loss of children and widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries. And for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For thus, uh, excuse me, for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. 
thou wisdom and thou knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am and none else beside me. Because Esau thinks he's the most high. So let's go back and I'll finish the, the, the verse. It says, verse 8, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burnt with fire, for strong is the Lord Yahweh who judgeth her. All right? So in one day, death, mourning, and famine. And we know that it's all leading up to that one day. You can look at the state of the world. Look at, look at the, the supply chain, man. And how everything is being broken up and you being cut off on every side. All right? So that you can beg your government. You can beg the mind control for the solution. Because that's Esau's tactic. Auto ab chaos. You know, order out of chaos. Problem, reaction, solution. They cause a problem. The people react. And then they bring a solution. Just like their Luciferian duality. You know, they, they, they're pitching this, this uh, out with the dark and in with the light. But their light. Is, a, is, 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 is Satan, okay? Their light is an adversary against the Most High. And that's why their light is gonna be put out. Scriptures say how often their candlestick put out, man. The light of the wicked shall be put out. So the real light is coming, which is Yahawashai, and he's gonna crack those clouds to save his elect, man. You know, so that's it of the lesson. Like I said, Revelations 18 and one through eight. And um, I hope this lesson was edifying. To those of the hopeful elect, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kodash. Call Halal La Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.